Radio 1000, KTOK, Gwen Falk, and Air Lippert. Well, it's Easter weekend, and I have a tradition, and it's called John J. Dwyer, best-selling, award-winning author. I always invite him in when I get to pre-record. Seems like Easter, Christmas, all the special holidays. John, thank you so much for coming in. He is a, an award-winning multiple award-winning author of Oklahoma history books. Uh, I had him on about the Oklahomans, which was, is a an incredible resource book. And I like what Bob Blackburn said about that, that you tell not only what people did, but you tell why. And so, you know, this is radio. You talk. You don't just nod. You're doing so good, though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he is here today because he has a brand new book called Mustang coming out, which takes on uh, Oklahoma history in a totally different era. You're kind of doing the the textbook resource books, the Oklahomans in volumes, and then you have these uh, other incredible books that have won the Will Rogers Awards that are, uh, how do you think of these? Well, Gwen, I guess I have two afflictions. I, I, I'm, I'm just obsessed with writing nonfiction history books, but also historical novels. So uh, Mustang is a historical novel. It is very much in the vein of Oklahoma history, though, moving up a little bit in time from the Oklahomans book. This is World War II era. And, you know, this is uh, Easter Sunday. And I was thinking, you know, what's a good thematic tie-in with Easter for this new World War II novel, Mustang. And what comes to me is this was a time, this this story, the, the reader will go back into a period in, in time, Gwen, where something that hasn't been true, I think, in a long time in this country was, and that is that we were united in a common purpose, uh, a common crusade, if you will. And it was the defense of our own country, and it was also to... Uh, to rise up against the tyranny of the world in that generation that threatened all the things that are special about Easter Sunday. Uh, the, the Christian faith, uh, the right to practice it, the right to practice any faith. And so Mustang is going to take the reader into the adventures of a bunch of Oklahoma flyboys that go to take on the greatest totalitarian uh, machines in the history of the world in World War II. And the name came from? Well, Mustang, uh, as, as some of your readers know, uh, there was a prequel to this book that came out a couple years ago, uh, won one of those awards, Short Grass. Yes. And so one of the main characters in that book was Jeb, the main character, Lance Roark's beloved Mustang horse. And so... Uh, of course, you don't have to have read Short Grass to read Mustang. It's a standalone novel. But uh, the, the title comes from a kind of a combination of, of Jeb's, of uh, Lance's beloved Mustang horse back on his Oklahoma farm, as well as this sensational P-51 P Mustang fighter plane That's that I... made the difference uh, in the European air war, which was what was crucial for the American army and the Allies to have the, the skies cleared so that we could even land on, on Normandy beaches on D-Day without getting our entire army slaughtered. What a wonderful uh, time period, because you're so right. Anyone I know that served in World War II, and both of my parents did, uh, that was the most special time in their entire lives for that mission that you're talking about. Yeah, it was. You know, uh, we, we hear this term, the greatest generation, and, and you think, well, what's that mean? Is that just somebody coined a term because it sounds good on, on TV or radio? Well, no, it's because of what they accomplished. And, you know, that was, that was an era... Uh, in which we were united as a people. And, and yet I want to say that, uh, Gwen, that this book, uh, there's kind of a bonus package in this book for the reader. Uh, it's got the patriotism, it's got the nostalgia, it's got the Glenn Miller band sound and all that. <laughs> but we also go beyond where the typical World War II novels do. What we do, for instance, is we, uh, I mean, the reader is going to climb into the cockpit with Lance Roark and these Oklahoma boys in the European Air War, and we're going to see up close and personal the, the forgotten story of how those guys suffered post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome uh, disorder uh, in ways that 
there, there were not ways available at that point in time no. for them to, to get the kind of help that our, our and boys and girls... And you couldn't admit, really. That's, that's right. And we probably all have an Uncle George, which I had an Uncle George, an Oklahoma City guy and great businessman and leader. And periodically when I was a boy, Gwen, he would get up and leave the room. And I'd ask my mom, what's wrong with Uncle George? And she would say, well, well, he's got shell shock from, from the war. I'd say, well, what's shell shock? And they would just tell us kids, well, that's where, you know, he, it was so loud that he it hurt his hearing. He's kind of deaf. Mm-hmm. But shell shock was post-traumatic stress disorder. It was these guys... And in Mustang, the reader is going to find out just what an incredible challenge that our our aviators faced going up against the German Luftwaffe that had had destroyed all comers up to that point. They'd taken on the Russians, the British, the French, everyone. And so what we want to do is, in the course of an action-packed novel that's full of patriotism and nostalgia and love of America is to look in and see what these fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers now of ours, the sacrifices they had to make for holiday celebrations we have now, for dates on a calendar, for TV documentaries, what they did putting their lives on the line. And I'm talking now about even the ones that came home, Mm -hmm. what they brought home with them. And most of them really didn't get home as whole people. They didn't come back 100% of what they were when they went. No, and aren't we losing like 1,500 every week? Yes. uh, We are down. I mean, you you pretty much have to be in your 90s now to have been a World War II veteran. And, of course, I know you've had guests on in the past, the Oklahoma Honor Flights, you know, that – took these great, uh, uh, brave patriots to Washington, D.C. and stuff. But uh, I think it is uh, it's something that to, to, to have a, an adventure and a romance, which it is as well, but to have kind of a, of a reset for us because we are so spoiled. I mean, even those of us that are not the most affluent, are we live like kings compared to the rest of the world, and it's because people before us delivered that freedom to us. And, of course, Easter's all about resetting. Uh, this is so timely, truly, so timely. I feel very timely about it. We are pre-recording this so that you and I can spend Easter Sunday with our families, but uh, hot off the press. Woo! It's burning my hands right here. If people want a copy of Mustang... How soon can they get it? Well, they can order it right now, Gwen. In fact, uh, uh, online you can get it through Barnes & Noble or Amazon. Uh, Also, those of us in the Oklahoma City area, Full Circle Bookstore, uh, you can call them and order it from them. And I might mention that on May 23rd, that's the Thursday uh, afternoon and evening uh, leading into Memorial Day weekend, as you know, I hope you'll be there, we're having the national book release of Mustang at Full Circle Bookstore, 50 Pen Place in Oklahoma City. Free food that Jim Tolbert and Dana Meister and Julia Green and them are, are providing. There's going to be a swing band there. You're going to think Glenn Miller is in the house. How are you going to pack all those people in Full Circle Bookstore? Well, we hope that they'll just be flowing we'll out the into lobby. the mall and out <laughs> in the parking lot, right? That's fantastic. Well, and I know, you know, Will Rogers medallion winning author, you know, uh, here comes another. Well, and for those of us that are Oklahomans, it's not just an American patriot story, but uh, this is the story of the Oklahoma boys that went off. And as you know, some of them are are, are real characters, like Waddy Young, who was the first consensus All-American football player at, at OU and a great professional star. He is the best friend of Lance Roark, the protagonist. So you're going to see why Waddy Young became a legend and uh, and became a person that they hang his picture on the wall, not just for his football exploits, but for his World War II flying exploits. So historical novel, uh, interesting, because as I mentioned, you've written The Oklahomans, you've written The Oklahomans, A Study Guide, which every student should have see, every, I think all Oklahomans, uh, Where the Blue Bonnets Come, The War Between the States, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall, Faith in Gods and General Shortgrass, and now Mustang, but they're different. So do you start out doing the research of the Oklahomans, which is more a uh, history, put history into context book, and then for fun, you do historical uh, dramas? You know, that's a great question. I think the, the the truest answer is, you know, Dwyer, my name, John Dwyer, came from 
my great-grandfather, who was Joseph J. O'Dwyer, came over on a boat at age 17 by himself from Ireland, like millions of others of us that had uh, forefathers that did that. And, you know, the Irish have a lot of problems, and we've had problems in our family and even personally that probably come down from our forefathers that were Irish. But one of the things about the Irish at root is, for whatever reason, we're storytellers. And when people ask me, what are you? You do all these different things. I think at, at, at heart, Gwen, I'm a storyteller. That means I want to tell, I want to share exciting and inspiring things with other people. And that's where these, these novels come from. Well, we're going to share some more. John J. Dwyer is here with me in studio. Happy Easter, everyone. And full disclosure, we pre-recorded this midday before Easter. So uh, stick around. We'll get to know him better and more about uh, his incredible work. You're listening to 1000 KTOK. Happy Easter. Ah, music of a uh, not forgotten era, especially tonight. Gwen Falk and delivered here on 1000 KTOK. John J. Dwyer is here with me in studio. He has written a new book called Mustang. And it is a historical novel of World War II with all your favorite Oklahoma characters and what they faced. And uh, it's on your website for people that want to buy it. I got the first copy. And uh, also, you're going to be at Full Circle Bookstore on the 23rd of May, where you're going to be doing readings. And Yes, we'll, we'll do a reading and uh, the uh, bumper music there, uh, Glenn Miller. That's yes. exactly what, folks, if you come to our May 23rd national book release for Mustang at Full Circle Bookstore, 50 Pin Place, there's going to be a swing band in the house. You can hear all of those tunes, free food. Uh, we're going to do a couple of readings, and we're going to have some special guests, Gwen, that are people that helped inspire the major characters in Mustang. I'm going to be introducing some of those. So you asked really? about where you come up with these ideas. Well, when, at least the way I write historical novels, it's history, but it's also things and people and events and experiences from my own life that I bring to bear and weave into the history. And so, do these people know they've inspired this? Uh, they actually do now. Some of them were very surprised, but they're all coming. So uh, it, They were surprised. They didn't realize that they were the inspiration for characters? Not at all. In fact, I'll just tell you one, one person, uh, and I'm not going to say the name because it would be a spoiler for the book Mustang, but... Uh, this guy's father was a World War II aviator that died heroically, um, gave his life for some civilians in, in Europe. And uh, I took his name and gave it to one of the main characters in Mustang. And there's a lot of uh, similarities. For one thing, they're both Oklahomans, okay? So, again, Mustang, uh, the main characters in this are Oklahoma boys that come from the farm and the small town and so forth and, and go to, uh, to answer the call. And you're an Oklahoma boy. I mean, you have some Texan in you, but we're not addressing that. You uh, wrote for the Duncan Banner, the newspaper there. Was Al Ruby there? Al Ruby uh, hired me, and he was the first man that ever, he asked me, uh, where do you go to church, John? I said, well, actually, sir, we're not going right now. He goes, you need to change that. <laughs> you need to, I can see him I was in high school. That. He looked me right in the eye. <laughs> I could see him doing that. Well, uh, you know, you and I met originally through your first history textbook. I don't want it, people to hear the wrong thing here, but uh, as Bob Blackburn says, you tell why people do things as well as what they do, but um, called The Oklahomans. And apparently there's so much Oklahoma history that you're having to do it in parts. Well, that's, yes, unfortunately for me, Gwen. <laughs> I thought this thing would be done by now. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Blackburn, the historical site, you mentioned him a mo moment ago. And, uh, you know, I blame him for the Oklahomans uh, because I walked into his office one day. We would occasionally get together and, and visit. And he had my Civil War textbook uh, or history book, The War Between the States, America's and Civil War, on his desk. And he said, uh, I've read this. He goes, can you do one of these on Oklahoma? <laughs> 
And that in 2005, that's what started it. And so the first volume of the Oklahomans, as you know, goes from ancient history up through statehood. Yes. That took took 10 years to do. It came out Statehood Day of 2016. And yes, uh, along the way, we figured out if this book needed to have the electrifying passion, drama, excitement, uh, no holes barred adventure, you know, let the chips fall, tell the good, the bad, and the outrageous of our history, because our kids, they need to learn the truth. They need to learn what not to do, and they need to learn what to do. Uh, we fi- We realized it needed to be two volumes so the second one i'm working on now picks up right at the eve of world war one and goes up through the present and uh, i just have to say you know there's been more people in oklahoma during that time than there was in volume one and surprisingly as much action as there was in volume one with the land runs the oil booms the trails of tears the civil war there's even more in this one. It's unbelievable, our history in the last even half century. Uh, I don't know if I just didn't know it, if I forgot it, but when people pick up Volume 2 of the Oklahomans, uh, they're going to be amazed. And part of it is they're going to see some people they know in there, so I may need to get my phone number on this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, when does the Oklahomans Part 2 come out? Or is well, it- yeah, we're aiming for Statehood Day, November 16th of next year, 2020. Okay. And uh, I know, wow, that's a wide ways off. It'll be here quickly. No, it's not very <laughs> far at all, really. So. Yeah, so uh, people ask, well, and, and I have to say, I've never had... Uh, more folks asking when a book is coming out. And on the one hand, as an author, you're thrilled that everybody wants to know when's this book coming, but it also is a lot of no pressure. pressure. It yes. is. Um, but some of the things, people want to know, well, what's going to be in it? Well, I'll tell you one thing, just kind of tying to the book we were talking about a moment ago, my new, my new historical novel, Mustang, we have an entire chapter on World War II in the Volume 2 of the Oklahomans. Because what I've noticed, Gwen, uh, is, and I, I won't pick on Oklahoma, I'll just say typically state history books tend to talk about facts and figures and names yes. of what was happening in a particular time. To me, it, the book is named The Oklahomans, The Story of Oklahoma and Its People. It's what was going on in the lives of the people at that time. Mm-hmm. And you and I both know in the 1940s, our parents, you know, other people's grandparents, it was the war, quote unquote. So as I began to research that, and as this went from being part of a chapter to an entire chapter dedicated to Oklahoma in World War II, I realized that some of the greatest heroes and uh, most important leaders in World War II were Oklahomans. And I'm thinking, what are we doing to ourselves? We don't even teach our children this. No, we don't. Okay, throw out a name. Well, I'll throw out a name. Mark Mitcher, okay, M-I-T-S-C-H-E-R. This guy was whatever the highest rank of admiral is. He was the fast boat carrier. They call him fast carrier uh, uh, fleet that basically led the American military across the Pacific fighting the Japanese and led us to victory. He was the guy who was, he commanded an aircraft carrier at the Battle of Midway. He commanded our carrier force, carrier fleet, all the way across the Pacific uh, Ocean. And and this guy, he was in every major battle. He was leading the leaders. He was commanding the aircraft carriers and the uh, aviators and everyone. And he's an Oklahoma boy through and through, Mark Mitcher. So somehow I missed him growing up. I missed, I'd never heard of him. What about the, the concerns these days about going back and featuring history is diversity. Right. And the stories that weren't told about others that were part of it well i promise folks that are listening uh i didn't i didn't prep gwen with that question but to me that is one of the most uh, exciting things about both our oklahoma books is take for instance african-american history mm-hmm. something like the tulsa race riot yes uh, i actually in volume two the oklahomans refer to it as a tulsa race war because mm-hmm. that's more what it was a condensed mini war over a couple of day period uh, that wasn't even mentioned in our history books. It wasn't mentioned, period. Uh, the, the city of Tulsa kind of had a collective state of amnesia over it for a century, different people for different reasons. But that is one of the, the uh, most incredible events in Oklahoma history. So what, what we've done, I spent four months, I spent a, a whole summer and part of a fall just 100% working on the, this event. 
what happened for a century, it was ignored. And then in, in recent times, it's been talked about, but there have been a lot of different theories thrown out that weren't based on history. In right. fact, so what we've done is we brought the Tulsa race riot or war full bore to the reader in a blow-by-blow, blow, and it reads itself like a historical wow. novel. What about Clara Looper? Truly the mother of the modern-day civil rights movement. Right here in Oklahoma City, the first lunch counter sit-in wasn't in Greenville, North Carolina, like the national media says. It was right here downtown OKC four years before that. We talk about that. Boy. How I'd about like, the Vietnamese, like... boy, uh, Vietnamese boat people and people that have risen up to help lead this state yes. in uh, uh, the Asian district and elsewhere? Okay, I'd like to have your brain, and I guess the closest thing to that would be to have the Oklahomans Part 1 and Part 2 and Short Grass and Mustang and more. I, I look forward to talking to you again very soon. John J. Dwyer, again, uh, the special event at Full Circle is Mar May 23rd, uh, downstairs here in 50 Penn, and you can go online to your website, which is... John, middle initial, J. Dwyer, johnjdwyer.com, D-W-Y-E-R. And see for yourself all these incredible books. Thank you so much, John. Happy Easter, everyone. You're listening to 1000 KTOK.